Uh, hello? Is this the uh, fortune teller? Mm, yes, I can tell you your fortune. Mm, what would you like to know? I wish to know the results of the 2024 Formula One World Championship. Really? Yes. You could ask anything at all, and you want to know that? Absolutely. You got to be this joker. You have my skills and talents. Fine! Look into my crystal ball and you'll see what you seek. Here we go again, another F1 season is right around the corner and so it's time to make some awful predictions uh, for the coming season. Let's stop the waffle and get right into it. So similar to last year I'm going to run through the drivers and the team standings and then set a couple of bold predictions for the year. Starting us off in P20 I have the slowest Viking in the world, Kevin Magnussen. Uh, not a lot to say here, uh, the Haas was awful for the majority of last year and Kevin had next to none of the glory moments in that car. No, those went to his teammate, but more on him in a bit. Uh, I agree with what seems to be the majority or the sort of the general consensus by the fans uh, is that Haas is going to be languishing at the bottom of the pack yet again. Uh, their new team principal, rest in peace, Gunter Steiner, uh, has even come out and said they don't believe they're going to be anywhere but bottom uh, come Bahrain. But yeah, uh, so bottom of the pack again for Haas, in particular K Mag. He'll get the odd point or two, but end up P20 come season end. My P19 driver is Joe Guan Yu. Uh, I just don't think the car package will be there for one, and if anything, they're going to take a step backwards in 2024, just as they did last year. Uh, I also don't see Zhou taking uh, that next step towards fighting his teammate any more than he already is, um, so not really going to be battling for those points on a regular basis. Uh, if the man hailing from Shanghai doesn't want to lose his seat uh, come the end of the year, he's going to need to put in one miracle of a performance. A miracle like Nico Hulkenberg actually getting to show off his skills in a good car, it's never going to happen, I have him P18. For me, the German, just like K-Mag, uh, the package won't be there for Hulk, uh, which is a shame because, like I said, he's real talent, deserves to be driving more than just a shitbox of a car. Um, he'll put in a few good performances, uh, a couple of good races, get some points on the board, but ultimately, uh, I think it will be uh, a race for last between Haas and Kick Stake F1. Which means it's probably no surprise that I have Bottas in my P17 spot. Uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself here, so I'll make it quick. Best driver to have the best of the worst cars, if that makes sense. Uh, don't think he'll be sticking around for Audi, in all honesty. Uh, it just hasn't got the grit. Uh, I think he's on his, uh, his uh, honeymoon days in Formula 1 and uh, we'll be moving on shortly. But there we are. America, America, fuck yeah! Swooping yeah! into P16 will be Logan Sargent. Uh, an improvement on last year, as I think he'll score more uh, than just the one point. Uh, but I don't think he'll be quite there to be fighting for any higher than p16 maybe p15 at a push uh, once again album will be carrying the williams team uh, across uh, the 2024 season hopefully logan uh, now that he's had a year to kind of settle in to not only f1 but that team as well he'll be able to show uh, you know what he's got a little bit more uh, but yeah only time will tell i think with a package that he's going to have and the skills that he showed last year is not going to be any more uh, than that P16 for, for Logie Bear. Next up, uh, the first of the Visa, Cash App, Netflix, Marmite, Dyson, Weesabix, Racing Bulls, <gasps> Yuki Tsunoda. Uh, now, last year I got it all wrong uh, with Yuki and I apologise. And finally, I think there's going to be a mid-season driver change. If I was to put money on it, I think maybe Yuki Tsunoda. I touched on before why I think... 
if only you scored points for B11, he'd be laughing. Um, Tenoda would have a whole, whole haul of extra points, um, but sadly you don't, so, <clears throat> oh well. Uh, this year, I think the Japanese driver will uh, score well, uh, but I think he'll be at the bottom of the hyper-competitive midfield. Um, I see the racing bull, you know, uh, improving on last year's Alpha Tauri, uh, but not really matching up to that upper midfield pack. So, um, yeah, I've got Yuki Tsunoda in my uh, P15 spot. Next in the midfield battle for me, well, he's a French driver driving for a French team. It's Ocon. For me, I can't see Alpine moving forward, and with the upper teams, as I say, being more competitive, uh, I mean, it's Alpine, and, if, and for me, in particular, Ocon will lose out. I have a feeling after being outscored by Gasly last year, uh, Ocon will try and prove himself uh, the team leader and end up overdriving, uh, which is why I have him as the worst of uh, the French outfit. Ocon P14. Following Ocon is another French speaker, or... Should that be Canadian French? As I have a big boy Stroll in my next spot. Uh, we've been saying the same thing for Stroll for year after year, it feels, at this point. Uh, on his day, he's got the pace to keep up with the big boys. Uh, it's just when he decides to show that pace, which is the problem. Uh, I see no reason why he uh, will stray away from this lack of consistency trait. Uh, now he's so embedded into the sport. And again, we'll be getting tighter and sharper at the at the top end of F1, so I think he'll be left behind and well, not even make the top 10. B12 uh, is the other Visa Cash Up Smeg Dulux John Deere racing bull. Uh, it's Danny Ricardo. Uh, I do think the car will be better, like I said earlier, uh, this year, and will give Daniel a lovely base to show that he's not uh, lost any of these racing chops uh, to the McLaren years and to the obviously, accident they had last year. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how he performs over the course of a full year uh, as opposed to the uh, limited races that we saw him last year. Around the low end of the top 10 was really hard to decide but for Danny all I needed to do was think back to Mexico 2023 and I'm reminded as to why Daniel might even make the top 10. Uh, for now though he's my P12. The second half of Alpine uh, is P11 for me. Gasly had a stellar first year with the French outfit, uh, his podium at Zambort being a clear standout uh, in those crazy, crazy conditions. Uh, I think he'll continue to build on uh, a good start uh, at the Enstone team, um, and thanks to his teammate being further out of the picture uh, and not scoring as much, he'll have more opportunity to bag those points. Uh, all in all, making him my uh, P11. Top 10 now and my first big hitter. Carrying the whole of the Williams team on his back, it's Alex Albon, P10. I know, crazy. I think it's going to happen, though. What a year he had in 2023. Uh, the tie driver had some outstanding performances, uh, scoring points uh, in a car that maybe shouldn't have scored as many as it did. Um, I can't help but think with the positive momentum Williams seem to have at the moment, especially with James Vowles coming in and pushing the team in the right direction, um, I think it's going to be a, a stellar season for Albon, scoring more and more points and putting him in that top 10 battle. The soon-to-be leader of the Silver Arrows is my P9. Uh, after a winning 2022 season, Russell never seemed to really get a hold of the W14 compared to his teammate, and I think that is a, a trend that will repeat itself uh, this year. Lewis jumping ship is a massive loss of confidence in the Brackley-based team, so if the car is worse or just doesn't move forward in terms of development, I think it's going to be another tricky year for Georgie boy. Uh, that's why I have in my P9. P8 goes to the first driver in red. The only man to win a race last year that wasn't in a Red Bull, of course. Carlos Sainz. Carlos had a consistent year in 2023, having more points finishes across the year than his teammate, uh, but still finishing behind him in the standings. If we had the Carlos we saw across Monza, Singapore, uh, I'd put him a lot higher. Sadly, Carlos lacks consistency in those outstanding performances. He can get those consistent points, you know, mid-range of the pack, lovely jubbly. It's those top 
tier. Pulling it out of the bag performances, we just don't see enough from Carlos. Uh, I think this year he'll be competitive, uh, but ultimately miss out, as I say, on those star moments. After having the most dominant car in all of F1 history, I think I can speak for the majority of people when I say we wanted to see a little bit more from Sergio Perez. Uh, despite coming in P2 in the standings last year, he definitely wasn't the second fastest driver across the whole season. Hamilton was even a threat towards the end of the season uh, for nabbing that P2 spot in the standings. Uh, I think Perez will be more or less uh, as he was last year, uh, but in my opinion, with better drivers getting better cars, I think he'll struggle to keep in that top five. It'll be close, I'm sure, but ultimately, I have Checo losing out P7 for him. From one man who disappointed to another who astonished, uh, my P6 and just outside uh, of an incredibly hard to decide top 5 is Fernando Alonso. Uh, what a start last year, Fernando had 6 podiums in the first 8 races was not on my bingo card. Uh, the reason he's not higher on this list is the same reason uh, those run of podiums stopped development. Uh, it seems that Aston Martin just haven't got their heads around how to develop this new gen of car and we saw them go around the houses so to say, going the wrong direction uh, with last year's car and having to revert back to the previous spec uh, towards the end of the year. And so it's because of this that I think it will put them at a disadvantage moving into this season all that time wasted. Alonso will still wring the neck of what Ever car he gets and put out those star performances uh, but come season end I don't see him finishing any higher than P6. Top 5 of the championship now and for my P5 spot we have the best championship result for the young Australian driver Oscar Piastri. Oscar had one of the best rookie seasons in recent years and was the first rookie since Lewis Hamilton to score multiple podiums in their first year in the sport. Oscar's biggest weaknesses last year were his tyre wear during the races and whilst I have no doubt he'll be improved this year I just don't think he has all the components to challenge the remainder of the grid properly just yet. Who knows, he may be a really fast learner and this might be another uh, Yuki Tsunoda situation from last year. For his last year with the Brackley based team that brought him so much success, I have Lewis Hamilton in that fourth spot. Similar to what I said about Fernando, the driver will outperform the car. Um, so much so that I would probably say a, a final win or two for Lewis at Mercedes is not totally off the cards uh, if he continues this upward trend of last year. Um, compared to like his 2022 season that is. Um, I'm sure his last dance was the Silver Arrows will be a memorable one uh, and ultimately finish P4 in the standings. Moving on to the top three now, three drivers left competing for the title, coming in third place, one shy of his personal best in the season, it's Charles Leclerc. Charles Leclerc will finish, I think, in P3 in 2024. Things seem to be aligning for the red team. Uh, Basur coming on board last year seems to have jump-started things in the right direction, uh, getting the right personnel on board, fixing the silly mistakes of seasons before. Uh, just like those seasons, Leclerc will show why he's such a highly rated driver. Uh, I'm hoping that his pole-to-win ratio will start to balance itself out a little bit and do think it will be a close battle between him and the driver in P2. I imagine them swapping places sort of across the season, uh, but ultimately Leclerc is my P3. So that runners up spot then, I have it going to Lando Norris. The British driver had his best season in F1 uh, results wise last year. Uh, all McLaren need to do is continue the momentum that built up uh, in the second half of 2023 with that car development and all those lovely, lovely podiums. Um, as team principal Andrea Stella said, there are no more excuses uh, for the team. The wind tunnel is online. They've nabbed key personnel from both Red Bull and Ferrari. Uh, if Lando can just solve the qualifying errors we saw sort of creep in towards the back of uh, last season, he'll be fighting at the front more and more instead of having to come through the pack thus having the opportunity to hopefully win many races over the course of 2024. So that leaves us with one driver. In 2024, I'm predicting that Max Verstappen will become a four-time world champion, with the advantage that the Red Bull 
especially in the hands of Max Verstappen, had over the rest of the field last season. There's no doubt in my mind that he'll do it again and, uh, well, make it four in a row. While I do think it'll be less of a landslide victory uh, than in 23, uh, I just can't see the Bulls losing that much to their rivals over a single winter. Uh, Max, as a driver, is at the peak and that peak seems to be never-ending. Uh, no mistakes, no excuses, and thanks to the car as well, no real rivals either. So, that's my Drivers' Championship all tied up. But what about the teams? Well, if you've been following along, I'm sure you've been able to piece a, uh, a couple together, at least at the back end of the Constructors' Championship. Uh, just to go over them very quickly, uh, P10, Haas F1. Woohoo! P9, Kick Sauber F1. P8, Racing Bulls. P7, Williams. Keeping that P7, not much to do there for them, unfortunately. The gulf between them and P6 will be too much. Uh, P6, Alpine. P5, Aston Martin. P4, uh, Mercedes. And P3, Ferrari. Um, then in P2, I have Red Bull Racing. That's right, for the first time since 1998. McLaren will win the Constructors' Championship. And it will all be down to what I think is the strongest driver pairing on the grid. Golf between Max and Checo's performances is just too much. And with what I think and hope will be a more competitive field in 2024, that will have big consequences. Lando and Oscar are a perfect mix. Both so fast and still with lots of potential to improve and go even faster. Oscar may be a little bit behind Lando, but they're both there or thereabouts. Last of all, some off-the-cuff predictions uh, for the season. Uh, this year, I think we'll have two new race winners. Uh, if I was putting money on it, I'd obviously have to say the two McLaren drivers. We'll have 12 podium finishes across the year. Williams will have more than one top five result. I can see that happening and silly season will turn into batshit crazy season. Oh, and come the end of the year, at least two drivers will be leaving the sport. Again, if I were to put money on it, I would say K-Mag and one of the Kick Sauber drivers to be leaving. There you have it, all my predictions for this year's season of Formula One. How many will I get wrong this season? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching and be sure to let me know your thoughts and season predictions in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.